When I finished L.A. Noir and uploaded my video, a few people suggested that I would have appreciated the game more if I had approached it like a visual novel, an interactive story more than a game. I had no real response because I don't think I had ever played a visual novel game before. Feeling unable to properly respond to this criticism, I did a few searches and eventually settled on purchasing Slay the Princess, a popular and critically acclaimed game released in 2023. I had no real expectations. Here is my story. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Oh no. Is this guy gonna narrate my whole life in this game? I'm sorry, Mr. Narrator. But I am narrating my life now. As the book of the game reads itself to me, I begin to imagine the world it is forming. I begin to speculate how this would proceed. Are you serious? No, you have to do it. I say confidently, but without any evidence. Oh, I see. The game is called Slay the Princess, and the game will be all about subverting the well-trod path of video games delivering a princess as both hostage and reward for the player. A commentary on the default paternalism and implicit bias of men, an unconscious favoritism learned through exposure. Sure, I get it. I played Braid. I am smart. Oh, I am so sure of myself. I begin to suspect that if I were to simply walk the path, descend the aforementioned staircase, and slay the princess without considering the moral consequences, the game will undoubtedly tell me that I lose, but that I have discovered a valuable lesson about humanity. With this in mind, I desperately avoid going to the cabin at all. Perhaps, I think, I could beat the game in the first screen by standing tall, high on my soapbox, and shouting, unto the world, no. Unto, buckle my shoe. In every direction, there is a path, and a cabin, and not just a cabin, THE cabin, an infinite fractal of paths and cabins desperately trying to draw you back to where you need to be. Wait, what's going on? You're too stubborn for that, aren't you? It doesn't matter how many paths or cabins appear around you, you're just going to do whatever you can to shirk your responsibility because you care more about irritating me than you do about the fate of the world. Oh, now I see. This is more akin to Spec Ops The Line. I must commit the atrocity, and in doing so, I learn the thing, and our boy has a sad. Got it. Another voice. The voice of the hero appears to confirm this and agrees with my sense of honor and duty. The title card claims that this is chapter 2, but the game appears to begin anew. The words are the same, but my options are different. Did I lose? If I had, why did it say chapter 2? Is this a bug? I saved the game. After all, I don't want to lose my progress when I slay the princess and the game punishes me with a game over. I saunter over to the cabin, footloose and fancy free, certain in the knowledge that I... Wait, am I going to slay the princess? Don't I want the good ending? The good ending probably involves not slaying the princess, right? I do want that steam achievement. Okay, I decide to go to the cabin and feel my way through the experience. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The game says I should take the pristine blade, and the voice of the contrarian says I should throw it out the window. I, ever the reasonable man, do neither. I do not take this pristine blade and do not throw it out the window. What if I need it later to pick something out of my teeth in the most dangerous way possible? Oh, what's this? I'm a monster? Yes, I'm the bad guy. This is like Braid. I need to be the good guy. That's what the game is telling me. That much I know. And now time to go downstairs. And I do. The air here has a sickening, almost sludge-like miasma to it. No, no, no. I said I will narrate this. Thank you very much. <clears throat> the air stinks of long decayed and mummified farts. I don't want to do this. Let's just turn around and leave. Ah, uh, the voice of the hero is more cowardly than brave. Oh, ho, ho, commentary. I choose to jump to the left, fulfilling the prophecy of the criminologist. 
Finally, I see the princess, 20 minutes into my playthrough. I tend to stop playing a video game and save my progress for later after about 20 or 30 minutes anyway. My hands, 42 years old, are mangled and pre-arthritic, and my attention span is exactly what it has always been, limited. There she is, the titular princess, squiggly animated as if she were a patient of Dr. Katz, professional therapist. I am pleased that the final boss emerges so soon in this visual novel so that I can take my pills, eat a pepper jack cheese sandwich, go to sleep, and dream. Actually, I think I will have that sandwich right now as I write this. Wait a minute, am I the me that's writing this right now? Or the me that is playing this right now? Or am I the me that's reading this right now into my microphone? Is this a dramatization of my playthrough or what? What? What's going on? Wait, how did the princess get stabbed? I did not choose to do that. No, seriously, I explicitly decided to maybe not do that possibly. Oh, heck yes, a steam achievement. Wait, another one? This is all I really wanted in the end. Hold on, is this the end? The game boots me out, unsatisfied, and with only two steam achievements. What, I wonder, is even the fuck? Have I won or lost? Can I confidently claim that I beat the game? What does it actually mean to beat the game? Did I beat Doom after defeating the Spider Mastermind in Inferno? Or did I beat Doom after beating the fourth episode released much later, Thy Flesh Consumed? Or can someone only beat Doom if they do it on the highest difficulty level, Nightmare? Can one confidently say that they beat Doom if Doom 2 exists? Can I stop playing Slay the Princess now and play Doom instead? I could play Doom right now. Okay. I choose, of my own free will, to continue to play Slay the Princess. This is my choice, and nobody is making me do this. Oh, did the game start over again, or is this the next level? I should play Doom after this. Anyway, oh, I am on the path again. I am looking at the woods and the cabin again. The air of the forest smells fresh and pure, like the opposite of whatever I said before about the farts. Mayhaps, I think. We can spare the fair princess by saving her with even more effort this time, like a shining knight of olden days, justifying my usage of the word mayhaps. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. This time, I bring the pristine blade, but I purposefully drop it. I'm the good guy. The princess does not tell me her name, but in fairness, I am not entitled to her private information. I'm the good guy. I decide to free her. The game's narrator has not explained her crimes, and his silence on this is suspicious. The narrator has presented me with no proof of legal authority, and I conclude that the princess is a victim of kidnapping until someone proves otherwise. Even if the narrator did possess legal authority, I instinctively do not trust the police. I'm the good guy. I freed the princess by cutting off her arm. She is super okay with it. The narrator, the one that is not me anyway, will not allow the princess to escape and gives me fewer and fewer options. I refuse to slay the princess, defying the very title of this visual novel, but my refusal has fallen on deaf ears. I wonder if it's casually ableist to say that. I happen to know that a number of my viewers are hearing impaired. Tell me in the comments if I should rephrase that aphorism in the future. I'm the good guy. Before I can ponder my own conscience further, the princess, unconcerned with my competition of wills with the game, cuts my throat with my own blade. The game begins again, or is this the next level I have lost track? I assure myself that I am getting somewhere. The narrator claims that the world of the last attempt kerploded along with everyone in it, but I tell myself that the game did not show me the population of this other world. Maybe they do not exist. Maybe only the princess and I exist. What, what's going on? Where are we? Did we do this? Without realizing how, I conjure a bunch of hands and everything begins again. What's going on? I say, fuck this, out loud, to nobody except myself and the entire universe. I take the pristine blade and skip through the narration without hearing everything the voice actor has to say. I am here to slay the princess. 
Only when she dies will I be free. She is the key to all of this. Time to turn the key in the lock. Uh, I can't. I don't want to murder a princess. The game has convinced me that the protagonist is me, and not a character in a video game. My suspension of disbelief is more weighty and palpable than any game I have played in recent memory. Or perhaps ever? I am not playing as Link, or Samus, or Bonk. I am me in this game. Why, I'm not Bonk at all! What is this game doing to me? I ask myself, considering turning it off. But if I turn it off, what will actually happen? Because when I was booted out of the game earlier, and I clicked play again, I did not start at the main menu. I started where I left off, as if the game paused itself without my consent. No, I won't slay the princess. I drop the pristine blade and try to talk to her, reason with her, hoping to learn why the narrator believes she is so dangerous, or why the narrator wants me to believe she's so dangerous. That's his game. Well, I have a game as well, and that game is Doom. I find myself resigned to the fact that I do not have enough information, and that leaving her here to learn more is the most sensible course of action. No killing, but no freeing. My temporary centrism produces no meaningful results, like all centrism. I know you're still there. Why don't you make things easier on yourself and let me out? It's not like this little door I'll hold for very long anyways. Huh? It's probably a good idea to try to get back on my... good side. I wonder, does this show the princess for her true self? Is she the monster after all? Should I have slain her? Was all my moral belly aching worthwhile? When I get out of here, I'm going to pick you apart piece by piece. Well, the good guy never says that, right? Unless, of course, the princess feels justified in threatening someone confining her to chains in a basement. I admit to myself that I would be, I don't know, mildly peeved if someone did that to me. I would feel entirely justified in using violence to escape my kidnapper. Thanks for helping me get out of that awful basement. You try and stumble to your feet, but as the princess draws near, it's as though your body simply stops working. Alright. Okay, I think I will chug a peach-flavored, sugar-free energy drink because I do not want to sleep tonight. Oh, game over, huh? Well, I... wait. Ah, uh, son of a... You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. I have had just about enough of this game sticking its dick in my ear and brain-fucking me. This princess must die. Yes, I'm free. And now that she's gone, you can let us out of here. Right? But she was the one who controlled this place, wasn't she? And now she's dead. I don't like to think what that means for us. It means that you're stuck here. Forever. Except I'm not free. Oh, come on! I did the deed. The deed has been done. Done, this deed is. Yet, my murder, no, not murder, slaying sounds better, my slaying, no, THE slaying, a perpetrator unknown, the slaying was done, mistakes were made, there was an exchange of fire, so says the local news station, but the slaying occurred in a void of sorts, and I can't get out of the void, the staircase from before is mysteriously absent, my various internal voices argue with one another about how to rectify this situation. And really, there is only one way out. The blade. The pristine blade. I refuse, heroically, for describing this would demonetize this video. I die of starvation instead. Oh, here I go again. I am returned to the woods, and the woods are becobbed with cobwebs. This time, I tell myself, I will slay her only if there is a way out and I can get away with it. That's what heroes do. This time, I do not see a blade, which upsets me. I was planning on slaying the princess with the blade, but now I will need to slay her with, I don't know, the curtains? Can curtains strangle someone? Do I feel comfortable even speculating about that? Suddenly, the princess breaks my ankle, and I feel precisely 100% more comfortable speculating about how to strangle her. Alas, I am too low on the floor to reach the curtains. Worse yet, I see my legs, feathery down to the knees, and reptilian below them. 
I am reminded of dinosaurs and how they may have evolved into some species of birds, but no sooner do I remember the one and only good Jurassic Park movie, Does the Princess Possess My Body Like Goddamn Pazuzu? Once more, I enter a swirl of hair. Am I going to be blasted out of the game again? Nope. I choose the revolutionary anti-authoritarian dialogue option and wonder why I did not choose this sooner. I check to see if my anarchist card is still in my wallet, or if someone took it from me, as other anarchists often threaten. The blade is my implement. These words, forever repeated, become my mantra. The blade is my implement. Ignore her words. The blade is my implement. Don't back down. The blade is my implement. Slay the princess. I did it! And my reward is the brown emptiness that I will now start calling the hair space this far into the game. Did I win? I sit alone until... What? Oh, I did win. Well, that settles it. Good ending at that. No ending where the future refuses to change or any of that nonsense. Looks like the only way out of here is this. You're on a path in the woods. No, you're on a path in the woods. Can this game even be won, or do I merely keep playing until it crashes like Pac-Man? I tell myself to keep it together, take my meds, and this time, I will slay the princess even harder, like with a chainsaw. The princess lies there. Lays there? I used to be an English teacher, I'm pretty sure it's... You know what? The princess plonks there, be plunked in her gruesome visage. An apparition emerges from the floor, and in defiance of Ray stands, I am afraid of at least one ghost. I endeavor to slay the ghost of the princess again, with no calculable effect. I discover that the game actually does have an option to slay the princess harder, as I suggested to myself, but with no chainsaw in sight, this option is more of a joke. A joke on me for having thought of it, not as a joke, mere minutes before. I do not like that this game predicted what I would do next and in my exact wording. The princess blames me for her death, all because I'm the one who murdered her. Who does this think she is? I ask myself, immediately regretting my word choice. I remind myself to censor this later, or else risking what few women watch my YouTube videos. I never had too much trouble attracting women in the romantic sense. I was previously married and I possess an odd, unearned confidence about myself, but I have consistently had trouble attracting women in the business sense. I think to myself, if I spent some time considering why, I might discover the answer. If I asked my women friends, who comprise the majority of my friends, they might deliver that answer with gentle grace. I scratch my chin concluding that the answer might be unpleasant, and carelessly but purposefully dismiss the thought like so much refuse into a bathroom wastebasket. But enough about that. Let's play a video game. The princess has possessed me again, and much like Exorcist 2, my disappointment is boundless. Remembering the original Exorcist and how Father Damien defeated the demon, I end my own life, vanquishing the being inside me. My enthusiasm grows, like when I watch Exorcist 3, the good sequel. I will learn later that this is a rare achievement and that few players consider doing this. I wander once more into the hair space to hear a remnant of what once was wax philosophical about what might be. Then it's over again. I ignore everything telling me not to do this. I speed run through the next chapter. What are you gonna do? Stab me? Yes, I just need to think of this princess as a boss in a video game and not a person with hopes, dreams, and desires of her own. She is Bowser. She is Robotnik. She is whoever is the bad guy in Bonk. I never actually played Bonk. I somehow falter, questioning whether or not she is alive. And she takes advantage, pins me down, and murders me instead. How dare she? Only I get to murder her. Those are the rules. The rules that I made up. Back on the path. Next speed run. No time to re-listen to all the voice actor playing, I think, all the parts except for the princess? That's pretty cool. No, all that matters is the slaying. The game keeps trying to make me feel things about my actions, calling my entirely rational and not at all selfish inner monologue, voice of the cheated, and my completely reasonable defensiveness, voice of the stubborn. 
The voice of the cheated is portrayed as someone who wants to feel like the victim of his own actions rather than the perpetrator. I see what you're trying to do here, video game I'm playing late at night for some reason, but let me ask you this. If I'm being manipulated by the narrator and the princess, how am I not the cheated? Oh, and what you call stubborn, I will call... Hang on. Resolute. I am resolute. Aha, you forgot about synonyms, huh? Well, I never do. Now let's kill this woman. No more dancing around with wordplay. Time for murder. Much like the princess, I am trapped. And if she has a right to defend herself from her captors, so do I. Stabby stabby. The princess stabs me instead, plunging her blade into my tender flesh. The blade is in my hand, but her blade springs forth from her own body. Bull shit. Absolute bullshit. The voice of the cheated is characterized as childish and believing himself to be treated unfairly, but like, is he wrong here? Am I supposed to feel bad for agreeing with the voice of the cheated? At this point, arguing that the princess is an innocent victim chained up in a basement is foolhardy. Whether I'm the good guy or the bad guy, she is far from defenseless, clearly has unsavory motivations, and terrifying machinations. And you know what? It's her or me. You're on a path in the woods. No, fuck that. If we're gonna have to keep doing this over and over and over again, we're not starting in that goddamn woods every time. We're starting in the fucking cabin. You're what? I feel dizzy. Oh ho ho ho! I guess I took us to the cabin, didn't I? Isn't that interesting? Who holds the cards now? He's right. I'm sorry, but again, I will not be made to feel bad for agreeing with the least pleasant voice in my head. The voice of the cheated has my back, like a comrade in arms. If pressed, I suspect he might have bad social politics. We all know that one guy, but at this point, I'm just glad he's on my side. The voice of the hero has brought me nothing but trouble, death, and radical centrism. All worthless. And voice of the stubborn, this guy knows what's up. Ah, impossibly high stakes make the fight so much better. Whoa, -ho -ho. this guy likes to play Doom on Nightmare, I can just tell. Into the basement we go. The princess tears open her own body, revealing razor sharp blades designed for throat slashing and disemboweling. I flirt with her. Not thinking it would work, but thinking it might be funny for a video. Why shouldn't I try this? This is a perfectly ordinary and sexy way to go about an adventure. Haven't you ever tried to roll charisma in Dungeons and Dragons? I once had my character flirt with an unnamed armed guard to get by him, rolled a crit, and winked at him so hard that it changed his sexual orientation, forcing the DM to come up with a name for him on the spot and make him a more important NPC in the campaign. I'm doing it. I'm doing that right now. I'm giving her the look. You flash the princess the look and a rosy blush rushes to the princess's cheeks as she breaks into a wide grin. Unbelievable. Believe it, narrator. I've got this. Besides, isn't this better than fighting? I found a perfectly non-violent and overall pleasurable solution to this life-or-death dilemma. I ask you, how do I not deserve the Nobel Peace Prize? Tragically, despite my completely sincere affections and my legitimate bartering for my life in exchange for sex, the princess decides to lunge at me nonetheless. Though obviously in love with me, she is even more in love with stabbing me in the throat. Cornered and desperate, I input the Konami code into my controller to no avail. This is a computer game, but like all games, I play with a controller because I have never been able to get comfortable using a keyboard while lying down on my bed. And that's my posture when I play all video games, even games that are allegedly better with a keyboard. Playing a video game sitting upright at a desk is for professional Twitch streamers with sponsored brand name Star Trek chairs, secretaries sneaking a moment's relief when the creepy boss isn't looking, and those weird guys who play Europa Universalis 4 and try to get you into it by pretending that it's fun. Well, I don't play Europa Universalis 4. I play Doom! Okay, I get it. I'm not losing, it's just how the game works, and it's great, I'm having fun, let's keep going. After several more runs through the cabin, I finally come face to face with a more mask-off princess. She is a goddess. A manifestation of change, destruction, death, and rebirth. In other words, 
She is the natural order of the universe. Without death, there is no life. You know how it goes. I swear, if I see one more movie, read one more book, or hear one more speech about how the real immortality is whatever you leave behind, I am going to pull out my own fingernails. Oh, how convenient. A comfortable version of immortality that is achievable automatically. Must it be this way? Sure, that's the way the universe works. Science, physics, laws of thermodynamics, and such. But did it have to be this way? What if the universe had different laws? What if existence exploded into being, and living things were made precisely as infinite and unending as existence itself? Why do we have to end while existence itself does not? Why must I live a life that someone else created for me? I did not consent to this, which means I do not have to accept this. I get to create my own life, my own self. Nobody can convince me otherwise. I do not have a narrator. I am narrating my life now. Uh, are you okay? I'm better than I've ever been. Suddenly, I conjure a chainsaw and threaten the manifestation of order in the universe until she helplessly backs down under the crushing weight of my odd, unearned confidence. I slay death itself. That's the ending I got, and we are all there on a ball of hair. If I may now finally respond to anyone claiming that I should have approached L.A. Noir like a visual novel, I'm sorry, but Slay the Princess provided me with far more options than the 2011 detective game. Playing this visual novel did not make me appreciate L.A. Noir more, it just highlighted what I already said. Slay the Princess has a number of endings and branching paths. Even though Slay the Princess is more limited in its overall gameplay, it's mostly just choosing replies and actions, it is far better at making me feel like my choices matter. I felt as though I was playing the game, and not that the game was playing itself. My input mattered, so much in fact that my decisions haunted me, and forced me into a mild existential crisis, from which, I assure you, I have fully recovered. I was thoroughly impressed and captivated by this game, Slay the Princess. Remember when I said that I usually only play a game for about 20 minutes or so before saving and tending to other matters in my life? I played Slay the Princess for over four hours, from the beginning of the game until the end credits. Now I know that some players engage in eight-hour game sessions on a regular basis, but I don't. Four hours is several times more than usual for me. I lost track of time, and I did not want to stop. I felt like I should not stop. When I recorded my footage for L.A. Noir, it comprised dozens of MP4 files stretched out across my playthrough. When I recorded footage for Slay the Princess, because I never stopped, there is only one. It's perfect. Pristine. I mentioned in my Felvidake video that the best way I can quantify my love for a game is how much I think about it when I'm not playing it. At the time of this writing, I have not stopped thinking about Slay the Princess. I am told that an updated version of the game will be released later this year, and I have a sneaking suspicion that I will give it another go when the time comes. 10 out of 10 will die again. Hi everyone! If you want to support what I do, please like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment under this video. I also have a Patreon at patreon.com slash renegadecut. I'll see you soon.